So Dr. Julie Jocelyn, I'm going to ask her to come up and join and we'll switch um, presentations really quickly. Dr. Julie Jocelyn is our English Language Arts Section Chief. She's been with the division, I believe, five years as Section Chief. Has plethora of experience in um, English Language Arts, um, in instructional practice. So I'm going to turn it over to her to share with you um, the update, status update for our English Language Arts Standard Review. Good afternoon, Chairman Kobe, members of the board, and Dr. Atkinson. I really appreciate this opportunity to share with you an ELA update. To begin our planning last June, the ELA team, the ELA team needed to consider the scope of work. And as a team, we did a cursory look at the feedback that had been provided through the surveys and the focus groups. This is the same feedback that Dr. McCoy shared with you last year. This was not a detailed analysis, but just to check to make sure that there were any critical concerns that needed to be addressed uh, quickly. We learned quite a number of important facts, and that really helped us drive the work of the ELA team as we began to think about the process for revision as well as the needed professional development and resources. We had a number of sources for educator feedback to consider in our planning as we waited for the Academic Standards Review Commission to complete their study. And as you can see, we have quite a number of responses to our ELA survey. We also collected informal feedback from teachers during our professional development throughout the year regarding needs for resources or additional professional development. We used the feedback information that Dr. McCoy shared last year with you, and we noted that there were no red flags that needed immediate attention. In fact, 321 standards out of the 481 received a 90% or more approval rating, and 17 out of the 481 standards fell below an 80% approval rating. When looking closely at those 17 standards, you could recognize quickly that the request was largely around the idea of needing more clarity for those 17 standards. Again, the team did not analyze the feedback, but looked at the feedback at a high level to be able to meet the needs of the field. We responded to the feedback for clarity and the need for additional resources in a number of ways. Last fall and this winter, we offered a professional development called Are We Asking the Right Questions? It focused on alignment of standards to desired student outcomes, to instruction, and to teacher assessments. We also did a survey to the, with the field to find out if our live binder and other resources contained the resources or the information that they needed. We also created a plan to update the ELA wiki page to include resources specific to elementary, middle, and high school needs. We also increased our ELA listserv membership by quite a bit. We did a membership drive uh, so that we would have greater outreach. And currently we're preparing a new professional development offering and this PD will be offered twice this month. It's called Providing Clarity. And it's through activities and discussions that we hope to facilitate a learning opportunity that will focus on ways to better understand standards and student expectations. In terms of our standards review, I would like to direct you to attachment three. And this is our proposed timeline for our standards review process. At the end of June, we'll convene a data review committee. The committee will be selected through an application process. And there will be approximately 50 members that include teachers, administrators, IHE faculty, coaches, and business community members. The ELA team will facilitate the meeting and let the committee look for patterns in the data collected from the surveys, from the focus groups, and from the Academic Standards Review final report. The findings will be compiled and shared with leadership and state board members. Writing teams will meet beginning in July to consider the compiled data and start revision work based on the findings. In December, drafts of the ELA standards will be shared with leadership and state board members. We'll release the drafts for public comment in January of 2017. 
The writing teams will review and consider the feedback for any additional revision. The comments and new drafts will be presented to the State Board of Leadership for discussion in March 2017. And in April 2017, the ELA standards will be presented for vote. We would then begin creating PD and resources based on the changes. We would conduct regional PD in the summer of 2017, and the standards would be implemented in 2017-18. If, however, there are revisions that affect assessments, this calendar would apply. In 2017-18, we would have test development, revisions, or creation of support materials, as well as summer PD. And in 2018-19, the new standards would be implemented. Any questions? Okay. Yes. I do have a question. Um, could you speak to maybe the possible um, yeah. delivery of the professional development that's scheduled for uh, between June and August of 2018, 2017-2018? 2017, 18, this yes. one, this slide. Yes. So based on the new standards or any changes that would have been made that would have caused um, <coughs> assessment changes, we would do regional PD delivery within the eight regions and provide um, resources and support that would really talk about those differences and changes. Thank you. You're welcome. Chairman. <coughs> yes. Um, it's been some time since I read the ELA standards, but I remember reading them, and um, I, you mentioned clarity, uh, lack of clarity. Are, were there any other things that you could cite that need to be revised? For example, uh, there was a lot of comment about um, fiction versus informational text, which is the word that was used by those that developed the standards. And yet, informational texts include nonfiction. And for I example, did that come up? And if it did, are we addressing, are you addressing that? Well, we'll wait for the data review committee okay. to really uh, flag those instances and look for patterns. Um, I know that just in our own professional development and the work we've done with the field, I think that overall teachers are comfortable with the terminology that is used now that they understand essentially what that means. But as far as what our data is saying, we'll, we'll definitely wait for the committee. Well, Dr. Johnson, we have the public that we want to understand it too. So I think. Mm -hmm. We should look at definitions that elucidate what certain words mean that could be misinterpreted. Big, right? Big because informational text tends to make people think of manuals to fix something Certainly. or repair something as opposed to nonfiction that is serious reading. I think terminology <laughs> would be a great he said, resource. Him fixing something is his fiction. It's fiction for me, too. But, <laughs> yes. Um, as an English teacher, that's part of the learning process for informational text um, with the standards, is teaching that those manuals are a form of informational text right. that you can get from, yet there are different grades of informational text that we have and there are different standards. And that also goes into the standards as well when we talk about research-based informational methods and those kinds of things. So the, the great thing about these ELA standards is uh, they tie together very well. So taking one out of context is taking it completely out of context, pretty much, if that helps answer that question a little bit. No. Well, <laughs> well, we have. Uh, my class. Yeah, 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 no, I, no I, I want the teachers to understand it, but I want the public to understand too. Right. I, I want things written in a way that have clarity to the public too. And, 
can I interject one quick thing? And as I mentioned before, too, sometimes the, just based on the academic language, the standards themselves, but we can develop support documents yeah, so that parents right. then understand that. Yeah. Yes. And that's you know, definitely something that would be part of that work, the support documents that parents, we can unpack it for parents where they understand. That's, a, that's what I was driving at. <laughs> Thank you. One of the things that I'm going to be looking for in both of these processes is that we spend a lot of time, or we spend a lot of time, I would say, on the Standards Review Commission. They make certain recommendations. And recognizing that it's ultimately the State Board's responsibility to do standards, I would like to know from staff what recommendations of the Commission you agree with and ones that you don't and why, so that we can be informed on those particular issues. I think it's perfectly appropriate for this board to uh, agree and disagree with, with the standards review process, but I don't think it's appropriate for us to ignore the problem, the, what they did. And I want us to be able to be public on, on how we do that. So as you guys report back, I, that's the question I'm going to be continuing to ask, and I want to make sure you're aware of that. I, I thought Mr. Davis said you would, that, that they absolutely would be considered as part of the process, so we have to use this. Yes, considered, but didn't necessarily say agree. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Donald. Ms. Wilby? No, that was just going to make that point that <coughs> Chairman Covey and Dr. Oxendine sure. were members of that Academic Standards Review Commission. And as you know, as you know, um, Dr. Oxendine is your vice chair of this committee, and so she is intricately involved in this process and this work. So. It is an inherent part of the review of the standards. I'm not suggesting it isn't. I'm just suggesting that we make it clear when you report back what we're agreeing on, what we're disagreeing on, to the extent we're disagreeing, that we you know, determine what it is. And I'm not anticipating that you would not do that. I'm just asking if that's the way, that's the question I would be asking. So you're welcome. And I think you'll see that. As the farther along we get in the process, especially with the review committee, the data review committee, we will definitely be bringing that to your to up as we're sharing with you their feedback and their recommendations and aligning it with what the Academic Standards Review Commission, um, which components of the commission's recommendations are being, that the committee is addressing. So I had one other. So uh, it looks like the inputs we've had so far is this survey. And then we're going to have a writing committee, and then we're going to have public comment as the standards are rolling out. If, if I'm a teacher and I just have a burning input that I want to submit, I want to make sure it gets built into improving these standards, and I'm not on the writing team, I didn't get a chance to do the survey, and I'd really like to submit it before the public comment, how can I do that? Do we have any way to respond to our teachers in that fashion? So a couple of things. So before, uh, one of the things I'm working with Vanessa Jeter on is to leverage our Let's Talk um, feedback process for ensuring that not only teachers but anyone has the opportunity to provide. And so any data that we collect through Let's Talk between now and the data review team meeting, committee meeting, that will be included in the opportunity to review that as well. Um, I think we definitely want to balance um, and make sure that that the committee has the opportunity to triangulate information and find things and patterns versus a single, you know, like I want this to happen and, and I know that's not what you're expecting. Um, the, other, the other part of that is that districts, once we have drafts of the standards, um, districts will have a team depending on content area. So when we release the drafts and school districts will pull together um, teams in their districts to look at them also. So they can also share that with whomever is leading that in their district as part of that feedback as well. So we'll have definitely some communication plans and feedback collection plans that would allow them to get that input. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. John.